We got a dope video today. We got Kendrick Lamar 616 in LA actually explaining with tons of new information. We know since time has passed, people had time to do their research, to actually look into these bars and break these bars down deeper than the reaction. Your first time hearing the song and trying to process the bars. Yeah. Um, can't wait to see what he come up with. A lot of stuff, I was on it. I want to see if he actually brings some new information um, to the table, but you got tons of it. Yeah, it's nothing like uh, giving something a little time to grow and you're yeah. processing the information. Everybody's yeah. trying to catch everything at yeah. once. But when you get the time to process and look back and see how things line up, it's really dope. Yeah, it is. Chi Chi, get the yayo. Get the yayo. All right, guys. I've been eagerly chipping away at the breakdowns for all the recent diss tracks that we got. Right. And today we're looking at 616 in L.A. 616 now, if in L.A. you haven't watched my other breakdowns on these records... Please make sure to do that as it should offer some good insight okay. into where we're at in the beef up to this point. And I promised my nephew I'd do this, so huge shout out to Marty. Marty, Marty wants to be a YouTuber someday. Yeah. If, he, if he wants to do it, he can do it. Don't let right. anyone tell you that you can't do it, okay, yeah. buddy? So right off rip, it was on Euphoria where Kendrick alluded to going back to back on Drake. And that's exactly what he did on this record, releasing back. 616 in L.A., just three days later. And this was something that I predicted over a month ago before ball. any of the disses dropped mm -hmm. when all we had was the Like That record. I think Dang Kendrick's going to use Drake's own angle against him and he'll probably even reference back to back while he does it. So before we even begin... Yeah. We I'm not sure why you got a crystal ball out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got cold, it. It's That's nothing like that when yeah. uh, you are here predicting stuff and actually uh, coming into intuition and get yourself a little pound in back. Like, yeah, I knew, I knew that was going to happen. Pound back. Yeah, because yeah. it's like you're so in tune with what's going on and yeah. now you're really able to just think in the moment. Yeah. And it's, it's even doper. It it's is. crazy. We have to take a close look at the title of the track as there's several meanings. First and foremost, the one that will jump out to any Drake fan is Kendrick's usage of the timestamp format. Drake is synonymous with timestamp titles and it's on these records where he gets Dang. super busy with the pen. Whenever someone tries to tell me that Drake can't rap, I'll always tell him check out one of those records, then tell me that he can't rap. So this was a very strategic and petty angle from Kendrick <laughs> as he attempts to taint Drake's long running series. Even right. since this track dropped, We've seen multiple people claim that Kendrick's version of the timestamp was way better than any of Drake's, wow. and this very well could have been Kendrick's goal. And let's be realistic, Drake still yeah. has by far. I mean, it's smart to try to uh, do what Kendrick Lamar did, but it's also what Drake tried to do with Heart Part 6. It didn't work out that way, though. It definitely didn't work it out did that way. It did not work out but that he way, tried the same. He but tried the same play. I like it because Kendrick always finds the way to up on it. <laughs> right. They don't have to take a million shots. He just takes a good shot. Yeah, that's all it's about. It's I'm not trying to shoot everybody. I'm trying to shoot the one that matters. Yeah, it's about quality, not quantity. Yeah. The best timestamp records. Like, he still, he still lays claim to that. Now, as far as the other meanings behind this title, there are several theories bouncing around, but I'm going to give you guys the most significant meaning and truly break down why that is. It was on June 16th, 2011, that Kendrick met Drake for the very first time. In a double XL magazine, Kendrick described the meeting saying, I did a show in Toronto on June 16th, my first show in Toronto. I think it was the same night we were going back to the hotel and he hit my phone. I guess he got the word that I was in town, he was there for the night working on the album, and he said he wanted to meet up. We met up, chilled out, and got the vibe. Right. Now remember, the Buried Alive track that Kendrick did for Drake was based on this moment when they first met. Okay. On Buried Alive, Kendrick reflects on this meeting with Drake, mentioning how Drake introduced him to the glitz sure. and glamour of celebrity life. Kendrick like described being Wayne picked up type. in a Maybach by Drake, and states that Drake brought him to a fancy place to eat where he talked to Kendrick about women and the industry. Right. However, on the track, Kendrick truly struggles with the idea of becoming famous as he's afraid it will change him for the worse, but he also realizes that this type of lifestyle comes with the territory. Now, what's ex- I feel like uh, Drake put him on to some stuff like, yo, this is how you go. <laughs> this is how it goes out here. And it almost remind me of a... Uh love and basketball when he was telling his son mm -hmm. like some of these women are gonna come come to your town and the boldest woman when you open your front door she's gonna be right there be right um there. and it's gonna be from city to city so it's basically like almost like what drake would tell him like yo these women this is how it goes some gonna be bold you gonna open your front door 
and take your hotel room and she's gonna be laying in your bed. It's a possibility. Yeah, it's possible. It, it comes with it. Yeah, it comes with it. He pulled up in that Virgil though too. That was crazy. That yeah. Virgil made back. Yeah. Extremely nice. critical to point out. That's what that was a Virgil. Is how Kendrick right. came off the track. It's crazy. The reason why the highlight was when he said you belong to the people when you outside. So he clearly says that's what he said. Now who is he? Who's he talking about? Belong to the people when you outside. What most people fail to realize is that these last few lines is not Kendrick speaking to himself. But Drake having a conversation with Kendrick. Right. And this is the part that's really important. When asked by Double XL to explain the meaning of why the track ended like this, Kendrick said the following. At the end of the verse, that's him in the conversation. Him telling me that you must accept this lifestyle and it's up to you how far you're going to go with it or how much you're going to let in. Yeah. I then acknowledge what he's saying when I say, then I died which leaves it hanging on the audience trying to figure out where I would go with it. Hmm. Will I let it taint me or destroy me? Or will I know how to deal with it? So, I mean, it's on this night, June 16th. Where it's a very special date, uh, June uh, 16th. And if you look back in hindsight, I mean, look, he handled the success and the fame well, better than most that get it. Um, so everything that he was thinking, am I going to uh, get destroyed or am I going to uh, keep doing what I'm supposed to do? It looked like he kept doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah, that's wild. That's totally wild. And that's the day before his birthday, too. Yeah. Where Drake is giving Kendrick a pep talk about fame, the industry, how to deal with it. <laughs> this Buried Alive interlude is important because Drake gives Kendrick a choice. He tells him that fame will come and that it's up to him on how he deals with it. Right. But the thing is, Kendrick wasn't the only person who needed to make this choice. This whole thing rings true yeah. for Drake as well because <laughs> Drake had the, same the thing. exact well, same right? choice to make. And after Take Care, his fame exploded, and he was completely consumed by it. Yeah. Drake's lifestyle in 2024 isn't that much different from the lifestyle that he showed Kendrick back in 2011. Drake is still living that same old rapper's life, it's just on a far bigger scale. Yeah. Now, in the case of Kendrick, he ended off the record making us wonder which way he'd go with it, and today... It seemed like everything he told Kendrick to stay away from he indulged in it <laughs> you know what i'm yeah. saying overly um, indulged in it and it goes back to the bar where uh, kendrick was saying no one cares about fame but you mm. he, we now know what choice he made unlike drake kendrick did not get buried by the temptations of money power pussy and fame <laughs> Both <laughs> took an entirely different oh, man. and the buried alive interlude is important because it acts as a full circle moment by Kendrick using the date June 16th in the title, Drake knows exactly what he's referring to and bringing this up 13 years later is extremely powerful. Kendrick proved to have the strength to resist the temptations that Drake warned him about and Drake himself was weak and couldn't do the same. Now I gotta say, Drake flips this narrative really well on Family Matters, but that one's coming up next. So when we get a track like Euphoria all these years later, the shit that he's saying to Drake is all the more impactful. I'm yeah. allergic to the lame shit, only you like being famous. Fans might take <laughs> lines like this one lightly, but it holds a lot of depth because Kendrick knows that when he first met Drake, Drake had plans of keeping a level head, as that's what their conversation was about. This is only further confirmed in the Double XL interview when he talks about Drake and the concept of the Buried Alive track. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was in a space now where vanity's everywhere and he had his hands on every bit of it and he's trying to escape that. But what's clear today is Drake lost his fight. I mean, he, he didn't escape it at all. It's a 2004 anchor. He definitely didn't escape it. Right. And 99.9% .9 of the people don't escape it. It's come. The so, mirror got larger. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. This is hard when you get all that fame all at once. All that attention. It's easy to say before I get a million dollars that if I get a million dollars, I'm going to spend it on X, Y, and Z. But yeah. if you get that million dollars, is that exactly what you're going to spend it on? Hell it's no. different. And it's the same thing. You think before I get famous, I'm going to handle it like this. But yeah. when it hits you, it might be a different story. All the way around. CSX. It's a nice first car. It's nice to think you. <laughs> As opposed to a Mercedes or BMW. I think that's pretentious, personally. Mm. And this is exactly why Kendrick right uses it. And he said, yo, I don't think I need a Benz or a uh, Mercedes. I think that's just too much. And then he's definitely, he's not that same guy who At thought all. that way. That, that we just seen in the video. 
Now he's definitely in the, the bins. <laughs> yeah. Car for like a teenager, I guess, as opposed to a Mercedes or BMW. I think that's pretentious, personally. And this is exactly why Kendrick uses June 16th in the title and why it's so significant. It's by far the most significant use of the title. 616, the day that they first met, mm -hmm. the first collaboration they did, Drake's sophomore album, an entire record was made about that moment. It's crazy. Now we're 13 years later and it's coming up again. It's crazy. And like I said, wow. Drake knew exactly what he was doing with this title because just days after 616 in LA dropped, Drake posted a Buried Alive Part 2 parody song where he mocks Kendrick and flips the narrative again. Mm. If you in a pine box, that's how you felt in 2011 while we wasting time. Mm. Dreams come true, Cody, this is where you die. Woo! Mm. Let's fucking go. <laughs> uh, that's how he felt. That's how he felt, and I was just crazy. I don't think I heard that, them bars. Yeah, right? I didn't hear the bars at all. I gotta hear that. That was crazy. He was talking heavy. Cody, this Crody, is where you that's die. That's what I'm saying, like... If you in a pine box, that's how you felt in 2011 while we wasting time. Dreams come true, Crody. This is where you die. Mm. Let's fucking go. <laughs> come on, hit the like button. However, <laughs> 616 like in button. LA could possibly be in reference to allegations of Drake being involved with younger women. As you guys know, Drake goes by the six god, six god. and 16 year old girls for him might just be prime real estate. Damn. That is the allegations. Allegations. <laughs> Allegedly. Now, this is only right. further supported when we look at a young woman by the name of Bella Harris. Bella is an LA-based model who even at the age of 13 stood at a height of 5'10", and she skipped the teen division of modeling and moved directly up to the women's division. Dang. So get this, at the age of 13, That's this crazy. child is being like categorized and showcased as a, a full-grown woman. When I was about 13, I was really tall. I was like 5'9", and everyone was like, oh my god, how old are you? Um, I'm 12 and 13. And back in 2018, <laughs> the internet went wild. crazy as Drake was spotted with a then 18-year-old Bella oh. taking pictures that resembled that of a happy couple. <laughs> That's crazy. I've seen this picture plenty of times, but I never knew who the girl was. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or right. where she came from. I just see that picture. Now it just makes sense to me. Yeah, now it jumps out. Yeah. 18-year-old Bella taking pictures that resemble that of a happy couple. Wow. This shit feels like teenage fever. <laughs> However, Drake has ties with Bella that dates back to 2016, and given Kendrick's angle throughout this beef... I think this is what he's talking about. Facts. This is a picture of Drake and Bella at Rihanna's anti-world tour. As you can see, the date of this photo is May 5th, 2016. And when we look at Rihanna's tour history, she was indeed in LA for that date. Then when we look at the fact that Bella had literally just turned 16, just one month before this photo was taken, Damn. it's all the more compelling. 616 in LA, Drake the Six Gob was indeed with a 16 year old girl. That's crazy. I was saying in the beginning, I want to see if you can have some information that I didn't know about. Oh, right. Like since time came, people had time to even break it down even more. He's already giving me stuff that I had no clue. About. No clue. And I thought I had most of the bases covered. I see I did. Right. It was it was more than I thought. Yeah. In LA, and I mean Kendrick Allegedly. said he had five Allegedly. more diss tracks in stock. And I believe him. Me too. I think he was about to get far deeper into this shit. Yeah. Had this thing kept going. Yeah. Furthermore, Kendrick dropped the record at 6.16 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Damn. Which is 6.16 in L.A. Dang. Then we got the time fact that June 16th. Crucial, That's why you can't, you really can't even say allegedly because these is time stamps. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like boom, 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 boom. And that's what um people liked about what Kendrick Lamar did. He out strategically did Drake and that's what Drake was always known for being a step ahead a step of ahead. everybody with this one he was always a step or two behind yeah definitely oh, always caught off balance caught off balance <laughs> Not, I didn't expect that <laughs> yeah. it's Tupac's birthday and considering Pop. that we've seen a few references to Pac in this beef already this Tupac one seems to back. make sense right Kendrick we need ya Next June 16th is Father's Day, and we have seen a slew of references mm, with respect to Drake and being a shitty dad, <laughs> and also jabs towards oh, the fact that Drake's own father was absent. You don't know nothing about that. And of course, Drake also executive produced the hit show Euphoria, and the first episode of that show 
aired on June 16th. Mm. And that's as far as deeper. I'm going to go with the title. <laughs> There's a lot of theories out there, but these are the ones that make sense to me. With all that said, let's move on to the artwork, which is simply a cropped out version of the artwork that we would see on Meet the Grams, where Kendrick allegedly had an inside mole collecting Drake's personal items and feeding him information. That's and crazy. this whole thing with the artwork and these items, like this turned into a, this really grew legs after. It turned <laughs> into this whole other conversation. Yeah. So we've got the title, we've got the artwork. Now let's move to the beat selection. First and foremost, the track is co-produced by Jack Ananoff, who is a pop producer most known for his work with Taylor, Taylor Swift. Taylor Made. This is likely a troll on Drake's previous claims on Taylor Made, where he insinuated that Taylor Swift had all this power over Kendrick. Mm. Now, what I feel Kendrick is really trying to drive home here by using this producer is that just like the culture of hip hop, even yeah. high level people within the industry itself do not like Drake and are more than happy to help bring him down. I think Kendrick's just <laughs> leaning into it. Like, yeah, yeah I, I am friends with Taylor, and she's co-signing this dish. She doesn't mm. like you. Her producer doesn't like you. Wow. Nobody likes you. Like, <laughs> this is a Taylor-made diss for you. Yeah. The instrumental samples Al Green's song, What a Wonderful Thing Love Is, and Drake's Uncle Teeny Hodges is credited as playing guitar on that Dang. record. However, what makes it even more impressive crazy. is the That's fact that Kendrick sampled Teddy Pendergrass on Euphoria, and now he's sampling Al Green, and they both had an album together called Back to Back Hits, Ooh, feeding I didn't know even that. more into Kendrick's claims. That, that is no that. diabolical. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, yo, shout out to him. He put a lot of uh, work into bringing stuff. Yeah. He bring it like when he says tons of new information. That's exactly what he's bringing. Tons Uncle on of guitar new that was on it. One of the tracks they used for the first diss track yeah. with a back to back track with yeah. Teddy. And you talk about Al Green. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a lot of information all yeah. in one. But I didn't know about the guitar thing, and I definitely didn't know about uh, uh, the last part of that. That was crazy. Yeah, it was. And people say that Kendrick fans are reaching all the time, but. <laughs> This is clearly thought out. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they just these records were very, very well planned. Yeah. With all oh, that said, we can now track, finally back get back. into yeah. the lyrics of the song. Yeah, we, where was that? Actually, I'm just kidding. No, no lyrics yet, because did, did you hear that noise? Like, what in the fuck is that? Yeah. People were claiming that this sound was from the V12 liposuction machine, which was something that Kendrick referenced on Euphoria, but when you really listen to that machine in action, it doesn't sound like this at all. Yeah, don't. But. And the main reason why this video took so long is because I got extremely subject stuck on finding out what the sound was. Okay, did you find First, it First I thought that it could be a money <laughs> counter. Nah, definitely not. Nah, we know I that sound. Maybe, maybe it's a right. lie detector test. Nah. Then I was thinking it was one of those old 16 mil projectors. Then I was thinking maybe it could be a life support machine. No, I was manipulating an equalizer, changing the pitch, adding plugins, still Damn. couldn't narrow it down. And if it wasn't for my girlfriend, I would probably still be doing it right now mm. because she had to tell me, look, Matt, it's time to move on. It Eight drove me days. crazy because there's no way that Kendrick's <laughs> looping that sound for as long for no as he reason. did. And it means nothing. Like, yeah. it means something. Yeah. And Drake's probably the only one who's going to pick up on it. Right. However, something I do feel fairly confident about is that if you really listen to the beat closely, Kendrick chooses to chop up the Al Green sample and loops it so that it sounds like he's saying, Boy Wonder. Now, you gotta remember, this track is in response to the Push Ups record, where Drake sampled the drop from Who Kid. Remember that. <laughs> and as we know now, this drop turned out to have a hidden message that flew over all of our heads, as Drake will later announce that Kendrick's child might not be his. Day uh, free. And for that reason, I feel like it's on this track where Kendrick is using one of Drake's close producers to also send some sort of message. By using this little sample, I feel like Kendrick is trying to get inside Drake's head to cast doubt on who the mole could be in his camp. Drake commonly refers to himself as the boy, 
And in this case, I think Kendrick is asking Drake to think. Yeah. Kendrick got the boy wondering. Like, I wonder who's leaking all my info. <laughs> I wonder who's the mole. Really got him boy, I wonder first. who's doing all this shit. So right off rip, Kendrick references Drake's track Survival. Now, Survival came at a time when Drake was fresh off his loss from Pusha T, and fresh he was off. still heavily beefing with Pusha and Kanye at this mm. time. As you guys remember, Drake allegedly had a career-ending red button disc yeah. for Pusha and Kanye, yeah. but he held it back, and it's on the survival track mm. where he appears to make mention to wanting to drop it. I was about to, man, I thought about it. It's unsettling to talk about it. So Drake leaves a blank in this record, and it's up to the listener to interpret what this could mean. But the way that I see it, he was either talking about putting a hit on Pusha and Kanye, mm. or he just really wanted to drop that track, but it was so scathing that it was unsettling for him to even think about where he was about to go with it. Template. Yeah, he was talking heavy. He was real talking real heavy like yeah. during that time and period. Um, so I can see what the guy's talking about. Like He think that he was ready to really uh, take it there because it's speculation that he took it there. Uh, before allegedly, yeah, the way he was talking, he wanted to go to war. Yeah, that's what it sounded like, especially on mob ties. Yeah, it was crazy. Thing that it was unsettling for him to even think about where he was about to go with it. Simply because it, it crossed the line of music. Either way, the common denominator in this case with respect to Kendrick is the fact that Drake is now saying the exact same thing to him. Again, Drake is making claims that he has some lethal secret, threatening to drop it. This ain't even everything I know don't wait to demon up. However, Kendrick's own senses are telling him that Drake is lying <laughs> as he claims that he thinks, smells, and sees the bullshit coming. Mm. And just like the alleged held back push of this, Kendrick claims he sees no fire. Damn. I feel like he's saying you were bullshitting then. Now you're trying to pull the same stunt again. Right. You're full of it. So right away here, any seasoned like Drake fan will tell you that when it comes to timestamp records, Kendrick is clearly matching Drake's subject matter stylistically. Is there more to life than going on trips to Dubai? Yachts on the 4th of July, G5 saw in the skies. Roll big body, wide body, Calabasas, roll winder, sun shining, wax tires. But okay. here's the thing, I don't think Kendrick's rapping from his own perspective here at all. I think he's rapping as if he were Drake. <laughs> 13 years ago, Kendrick oh, ended off the Buried Alive verse speaking in the perspective of Drake, and I feel he's now circling back to do that again. Wow. So, rapping in the perspective of Drake, he says Off-White Sunseeker. Now, this would be in reference to one of Drake's Virgil. close friends, Virgil, who not only had the designer off brand Off-White, but also, during a 2022 Louis Vuitton fashion show, the background music for that show was an album by Tyler, the creator, called Sunseeker. Mm. And this was Virgil's baby. This was his show. He, yeah. he directed it. And rest yeah. in peace to Virgil. Rest in Secondly, peace. a Sunseeker at the Marina is in reference to a company called Sunseeker, which is a builder of luxury yachts. <laughs> but in the Crazy. next line, things yeah. only get deep. Like, in like the like second two, three line, of those. Kendrick, from the perspective of Drake, claims that he's tired of buying phantoms mm. and now likes to buy yachts when he gets the fever. Mm. First and foremost, you've got to think about this. Kendrick does not rap about flaunting a lavish lifestyle. Right. He doesn't own a yacht. He's not one for buying yachts. This is just so far outside of the subject matter in his music and what he represents. And that is because he is rapping as if he were Drake. I don't Makes believe sense. that this first chunk of the verse is from Kendrick's perspective at all. A Phantom is a model of car crazy. from Rolls Royce that Drake dang, not only so owns sad. multiple variations of, but he's mentioned the Phantom in at least 10 different tracks <laughs> put over the years, on there. maybe yeah. even more. That's ridiculous. Now I'm in the Rolls with Illuminated Angel. All my Rolls Royce has got a different body. Facts. Bought a white ghost, now shit is getting spooky. Woo! However, Kendrick is painting it as if the ghost, Phantom is no longer spooky. scratching the itch for Drake. He needs to go bigger, which is exactly what he did when he rented the Ocean Corel yacht in 2022. 
No one will say for sure how much Coral Ocean is worth, but I can tell you it's well north of a hundred million dollars. When Drake rented this yacht, he was going all over the place. Like he was traveling everywhere. Now here's yeah, where sure. things take a turn and get a lot darker. Following up on his previous line about yachts, he claims that he likes to buy yachts when he gets the fever. And a fever is another builder of luxury yachts. Mm. This is where it goes left. <laughs> the Sunseeker has another line of yachts called the Predator, and as we know, <laughs> Drake has a song called Teenage Fever. Mm. Now, where it gets crazy is when wow. we look at Drake's relationship with fever. Millie Bobby Brown. <laughs> it's crazy. Here she is with Drake on a yacht at the young age of 13. Wow. This photo was taken in 2017, shortly after his More Life album dropped, which had the track Teenage Fever, and coincidentally enough, the media was categorizing the More Life album as Yacht Rap. Now, wow. to put yacht the cherry rap. on top, where was this picture taken at a marina? <laughs> Think about it. Sunseeker has a yacht called The Predator. Drake's More Life album was being called Yacht Rap. It had a track called Teenage Fever. He's with a 13-year-old girl on a yacht, and in this picture, they're at a marina. This is not a coincidence. Yo, the way he's breaking this down is making that song even more surgical. Like, god dang, I can't yeah. even complex all the stuff he was talking to about. To it up like this, is, it, it took time. It took a lot of thought. A lot of thought. Facts. Well, on a yacht, <coughs> and in this picture, they're mm. at a marina. This is not a coincidence Too many at all. Coincidences. It's not. Too many. And Kendrick drops plenty of little clues here just Great in how problems. he pronounces certain words. And if you pay attention to how he says, I like to buy yachts, he's actually making a reference to Dubai yachts. Fuck a phantom, I like to buy yachts when I get the fever. Is there more to life than going on trips to Dubai yachts on the 4th of July? And back in 2015, Drake was very happy to announce that he was on a yacht in Dubai. And if you're familiar with Kendrick's catalog, you'll know that he does shit like this a lot in his writing. Wine cooler, spill on my white t-shirt, the sightseer. So again, Kendrick is rapping as if he were Drake. Not only does Kendrick hardly ever drink, but when he does drink, it's exclusively wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I drink a little bit. A little bit. What's your preferred beverage? Uh, just wine. Like Jesus. What about, have you, like Jesus. Now, there is a huge difference in wine and wine coolers. Yeah, Most men difference. do not drink wine coolers. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about fruity drinks with <laughs> soda and tons of sugar. <laughs> Kendrick uses little keywords like this to let the listener know that this is not his life we're talking about. Right. Kendrick's not drinking wine coolers, guys. I, Drake is the guy that loves wine coolers. That's pretty much all he drinks. <laughs> and what's even more interesting <laughs> is how drinks. wine coolers... <laughs> Became his fired. beverage of choice in the first place. Were you drinking white wine spritzer? I was. That's my drink of choice. It's basically my mother had a friend who um, I was always sort of like infatuated with. But we used to go to her house and be poolside, and she used to like fill up a white wine spritzer, and she would like casually slide it and leave it there, and then she'd just show up with another one. And I always felt like she was trying to send me a message. <laughs> So, so I've kept that a consistent theme. Oh, we of course it. she was trying to send. That's completely inappropriate. Yeah, <laughs> it's inappropriate. I don't know, like, I don't know, like 15 minutes. So I've kept that a consistent theme. Mm. And take a good guess at who else loves wine coolers. Teenage girls, right? Mm. And coincidentally enough, with respect to this line, a 17-year-old Madison Beer attended Drake's Memorial Day party in 2016, and she shared the following story. I met him actually like two years ago at his Memorial Day party. Funniest thing about Drake is he drinks wine spritzers, like that's all he drinks. Uh, I was like, can we go to the bathroom? That's crazy, like, it's too many coincidences yeah. that just adding up. And I don't know how this guy got his information, but he did a great job. Yeah, he collected the info on this one. In your room, I was like, I just really don't want to wait on this line. And he was like, yeah, of course. And this girl had like a vodka cranberry or something in her hand and she tripped and fell and spilled all over Drake. Like all over oh, his like, white said. sweatsuit. Oh. At this point in time, Madison shirt. had just oh. turned 17 two months prior and this only acts as further proof that Drake seems to allow much younger girls at his parties. Madison claims that Drake loves wine coolers and then states that someone spilled the drink all over his white outfit. Mm. Kendrick seems to have been gathering this information about Drake for a very long time, and on this track, I feel like he's sending subtle reminders 
that most of us wouldn't catch. Right. Fun fact, though, his his house that he has, he has a bathtub that is literally the size of this room. What? It's gigantic and so dope. I was, like, sitting in it. I was like, can I, can I just lay here and, like, chill? <laughs> I even found some footage wow. of this exact Must Drake nice. Memorial Day it's party ridiculous. where you can tell that the women in attendance, to me, don't really look like grown women. I mean, wow. come on, guys. Like... I'm a fair man, but, like, I'm not even assuming here. Like, these are clearly teenagers, right? <laughs> and when he talks about wine coolers, he, he's talking about shit like this. Following up on the previous line, Kendrick writes for Drake by calling himself a sightseer, which is exactly what Drake was doing in 2022 when he rented that $50 million yacht. Wow. Here he is in St. Bart's at a New Year's Eve yacht party, and what we can easily conclude about this party is that teenage girls were definitely in attendance because there's clear evidence of this happening. I got back from St. Bart's on Monday. Basically, it was an after party that we got invited to. It was on the Vava. So many cool people there. We talked with Drake for a little bit. This girl was born on February 5th, 2004, which would mean she was only 17 years old during wow. this yacht party. Dang. I was just in St. Bart's with Drake and that 150 supermodel was in it. And I think that Kendrick knows something about these parties. Wow. I do. Trifecta, money, morals, and culture. That's my leisure. In the second line, Kendrick says, Trifecta, money, morals, and culture. That's my leisure. And again, this has nothing to do with Kendrick as he continues to rap as Drake here. First off, the definition of a trifecta pertains to gambling on horses, wow. where to win, you need to guess the three winning horses in order. Damn. That means trifecta. that in the case of this line, like money bread. would come <laughs> first, morals would come second, mm. and culture would be last. Dang. This is how we can easily rule Kendrick's own perspective out, as money is definitely not his first priority. Again, it's little things like this where it's clear to me that He's not rapping from his own perspective here. It really makes sense. Money really don't make me. I'm learning that now. You know, that's not really my um, my peace of mind having money. In the case of the line, as it pertains to Drake, money is seemingly at the forefront of <laughs> everything that he does. He's willing to put aside morals and culture to get it. This explains why morals and culture come in second and third place within the trifecta. At the end of the day. Those two things will never really Damn. matter for Drake, as money will always dictate his every move regardless. So, I mean, when we look at a trifecta by definition, like what it means, the line makes literally no sense pertaining to Kendrick. Once again, I'm not sure how this would ever pertain to Kendrick, as OJ. he never raps about shit like this, and there's no documented proof that he has ever been to Ibiza. Not only that, Ibiza is known as the party capital of Europe, which doesn't really seem Damn. to be a place that fits into his lifestyle. Mm -mm. When we look at how Kendrick structured and set up this first verse, it only makes sense from Drake's perspective as he was in Ibiza on that exact same yacht. And Damn. Drake has referenced Ibiza in his music many, many times. Grab my knees up, bring it to Ibiza. I'm killing Ibiza, so what? She took dick in Ibiza. And this whole infatuation. Drake's crazy. He never talked about it before in his music. It's only in oh, recent man. years Drake is where he's been bringing it up a lot. <laughs> it's almost like Ibiza has become Drake's new favorite hub. And if you listen to how Kendrick enunciates this line... That's exactly what he says. That's your hub in Ibiza, your hub in Ibiza. And I don't know why Drake loves Ibiza so much, but maybe Kendrick does. And again, in very recent times, Drake referenced a tatted passport in his music. To my visa passport tatted. I tatted your passport up. So this all ties and flows perfectly together in reference to Drake and how he lives his life. And given the fact that Kendrick rapped from Drake's perspective on Buried Alive, and this track is called 616 in LA, which was the date that they first met and the concept of that record, Kendrick is doing the same here. It's crazy. And the concept of the Buried Alive track is just as important for Family Matters, which we are doing next. Kendrick continues to replicate the subject matter that Drake showcases on these timestamp records. If you heard Drake say a line like this straight from his mouth, you wouldn't second guess it as it fits perfectly into the style of his pen. He nailed it. It is bang on how Drake <laughs> raps on these tracks. 
Bang on. Luke Kelly dwellers in Brooklyn just to push me some pizza. Mm-hmm. It's just the way he enunciates shit. It's very yeah. cryptic. Like, he doesn't even say pizza. He says pizza. Just to push me some pizza. And book me some pizza yeah. is weird, too. Like, it, yeah. there's shit in here that Drake is only going to get. Yeah. And on Euphoria, remember, Kendrick said that he hates the way that Drake sneak disses people. Mm. I hate the way that you sneak diss. If I catch flight, this will come down your right. And what Kendrick means by that is Drake will diss someone and only his intended target will pick up on it. Right. And due to the fact that Kendrick is mirroring his style and writing from Drake's perspective uh, on a timestamp titled record, it's crazy. his first verse uh-huh. is riddled with shots at Drake wow. crazy. that only he, he understands. Yeah. And that's why yeah. the beginning of his record doesn't even sound like a diss. It's so cryptic. Drake listened to this song. Like, if he breaking it down like this and Drake was perceiving it the way that this is broken yeah. down, he'd be like, man, this guy's fucking me up right now. Yeah, this is like, who would do? Who would, who would go this far? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's wild out here. Because he's <laughs> writing in the style of Drake. There's no clear shots to us, but he's dissing Drake the way that Drake disses. And because Drake has been at this pizzeria in Brooklyn before, this is just another clue that Kendrick has given us that he's writing this verse yeah, from Drake's fire. perspective. God, uh, my confession is yours. And now we get to the point where I feel Kendrick does indeed switch perspectives back to himself, as it's at this moment where he starts to sing and when you think about Drake's timestamp records, he doesn't really sing on those tracks at all. God, ha, my confession is yours. Now, I saw that people tried to paint this line as if Kendrick was conflicted on whether or not he should go to war with Drake, but honestly, Kendrick has wanted this battle with Drake for a very forever, long ever. time. But who am I if I don't go to war? I don't think he's conflicted oh my, about the war itself. The war. But he knows where he's about to go with this thing, and he's more or less confessing to God before he even puts his plan into action. It's crazy. Kendrick knows he's about to go on attack, likely committing multiple sins, which will need forgiveness from God. If you pay attention to the way he delivers these lyrics, he's deliberately singing crazy. in a very ugly, offbeat, non sonically pleasing way. God. My this singing style reflects Kendrick's internal chaos. Dang. He's holding some guilt as a dark side of him is about to emerge. Uh-huh. It's like he's saying, like, I'm sorry, God, like, ahead of time. I'm sorry. I know where I'm about, I gotta I know where about to go with this. Some people thought that this meant Kendrick was worried well, about please. losing to Drake, and <laughs> if he did, super. he learned something from it. But I don't think Kendrick even considered the possibility of losing this battle. Mm. I mean, let's be real here. He had this whole thing mapped out. I believe even at this point, he knew he had a winning strategy. Like, he knew he was going to win this thing. I feel that Kendrick knows that he's about to unleash a beast that we haven't seen before. It almost seemed like Kendrick knew one day this was to happen. So over the last 10 to 13 years, he's just putting stuff over there. In case this do happen, I already yeah. have all this stuff lined up that I could go to. Yeah, I won't have to go digging. And it, it makes sense because he said, how many are going to stop? One, two, three, four, five, plus five. Plus five. You had to be putting stuff away this whole time. Yeah, you got stuff in little cubbies. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah. waiting. Just waiting. And he's hinting at an internal struggle. When you think about it, Kendrick doesn't have any music in his catalog that resembles the subject matter on these diss tracks. I think the loss that he's talking about is he's about to lose control of himself, right? He's about to lose, he's about to go against everything he stands for, like his faith. However, being a man of God, he knows that the Lord will forgive him. And he knows that going through with this thing will offer an opportunity for even more growth. So a fallen sky is basically an aftermath of a disaster, and it's here where Kendrick is daydreaming about the results of the war. He dreams of jumping planets and becoming immortalized as he's fantasizing about how a victory over Drake would cement his name in the hip hop history books. And Kendrick's a rapper's rapper. Like he's a hip hop hip hop guy. Yeah. And a lot of our legends had had beefs, right? So I'm yeah. sure he's thought about adding a beef to his resume. He had to. These thoughts are so strong for Kendrick that they overpower his own faith. And it's here where he really decides that he needs to go through with it. He truly gotta confirms <laughs> this when he <laughs> says I I gotta correspond, do it. <laughs> meaning he needs to fulfill this fantasy. Yeah. So I feel like he's daydreaming about like destroying Drake and getting him out of here and how that'll feel. 
And then he snaps out of it and he says to himself, I got to do this. I got to go through with it. I, I correspond. It's nothing like being overly prepared for a test. I've yeah. been stashing stuff to the sides for over 10 plus years now. Yeah. I'm overly prepared for this moment, and there's no reason to have all this information just not to use it. Yeah, I got everything yeah. I could ever need yeah. right here. Yeah, it's almost like... Uh, my fingertips. Yeah, it's almost like uh, paid in full. I and mean, it's like, what's the point of having soldiers if you ain't going to use, use it? What's the use of having all this information that you've been stacking up? For what? If you ain't going to use it. Facts. Me all the time. Kendrick claims that he has three angels watching him and for anyone who's familiar with Christianity you will be well aware of Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Yeah. These are the three main angels chosen by God and each angel represents something different. Given the fact that Kendrick knows he's, he's about to embark down. on a journey yeah. that's testing his faith he knows that these three angels are with him for guidance on the mission. And guys, he pretty much confirms this by bringing up some of these angels later on in the track. Outside of this That's biblical hard. reference, yeah. in 2013, Kendrick lost three of his close friends, hmm. Chad, Pup, and Braids. Dang. He mentions these guys on multiple songs, but on a YG record, he makes reference to all three of them. From what I could gather, he was really close with all three of these young men, Sound so it's it. very possible that the three angels is with them is these guys too. I, mean, my children asleep with a prayer. I would believe that before I believe the Michael, the other angels, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Named, that one makes more sense to me. It does, it seems more uh, straightforward. Yeah. Close my eyes, definition of peace. So coming off his euphoria disc, Kendrick painted Drake as a deadbeat dad. Kendrick states that Drake is not instilling the same family values as he is and in this line, he confirms that putting his kids to sleep with a prayer gives them 100% peace. This is all he seems to need. Yeah. With Drake's kid, it's almost like he wants them to be just as famous as he is. Like, almost like the Kardashians' kids or yeah. something, right? Where they're all, he's all up in the interviews, he's in the music videos, he's all over social media. Whereas Kendrick, you know, you're hard pressed to find even a photo of his kid. It's like to me, it almost seems like because Pusha T put it out there that you're a deadbeat dad and you don't be around your son. You now you gotta overly put it out there yeah, whenever you're you around your back. son. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's always out there. So I think that's why it's coming across like he wanted his son to be famous. It was like nah, uh, Soldier Boy was saying you was hiding each kid from the world. So yeah. you don't want that. But you hide the world from your kid. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that narrative out there. So now you just gotta keep putting them in the spotlight. Pusha threw that. Pusha shot that shot. It was yeah. crazy because he put a target on his back. Yeah. Because regardless of what you think or how you feel about the situation your subconscious work all yeah, the time man. all the time and, and and if you just turn around for a second like i know it's been times you might see a picture of him and his son or something yeah. you're like look at this nigga trying <laughs> Try to be, <laughs> Try be a good dad we, we heard what he said you yeah know I mean? facts it's just two different parenting styles we could say at a minimum Tell me who gonna stop me. I come from love. kendrick makes a reference love. to himself as he moves with love strong morals and integrity and by living this way, he feels unstoppable. Right. In contrast, as we heard on Euphoria, he doesn't feel like Drake has the same values at all. So, in Kendrick's mind, this is like a battle of good versus evil. So, Kendrick refers to someone by the name of Estelle. Now, it's not 100% confirmed, but this appears to be his grandmother. And when claiming that she covers his heart, he's alluding to her offering him protection. Wow. And I really tried to confirm who she is in relation to I really tried to confirm this, man. Tree, or I tried to. Dang. Very private. Like, Drake's family tree, you could trace back to the 1800s. Did but Kendrick's is unlocking key. Like, there's realize. nothing there. Dang. But when it comes to Estelle, he's mentioned her Dang. before. Shout out to him. There's yeah. also the fact that during Coachella, he had her name on his custom boots, where it clearly reads Estelle Oliver. Estelle mm -hmm. Oliver on his mother's side. So I believe this is his grandmother. Remember when I picked up a pin, never said I can trust Timmy so staring at me rags and where I was from. Kendrick appears to be reminiscing on a simpler time. When he first picked up the pen, he didn't have much to prove, but it also seems like he didn't have a lot of confidence. Right. It's suggested in the previous line that Estelle helped open him up possibly helping him come out of his shell. Right. And by all accounts, he was a very shy child. 
which really isn't that uncommon for these artsy type of kids. Like yeah. they right. tend to be more withdrawn, right? Yeah. And Kendrick himself once shared a story of just how shy he was. There was a math question that I knew the answer to, but I was too scared to say it. And then this little chick said the answer, and it was the right answer, my answer. <laughs> that bothers me still to this day, being scared of failure. Right. And from his past lyrics, we know that his grandmother had a huge impact on the entire family. Ever since grandma died, everyone parted ways. All you on holidays. He even said that all those Grammys that he won, when he won all those in a row, he said those are all at her house. My seven trophies is that my granny's in heaven sums. And he did say when she passed away, he was a he was heartbroken. Grandma said I get some joy for my grave. That's my baby. When she died, my heart broke on the way. So when he was younger, it seems clear that this woman had a huge impact on his life. I know this type of power is gonna cost, but I live as a king in rhythms of a shooting star. Kendrick recognizes that he's asking a lot from the Lord while on this journey. Earlier in the verse, we heard him dream about becoming immortalized. He understands that the type of power that God has blessed him with comes with a cost. And yeah. to me, this first part of the verse here has a I lot of references to this God and religion. Yeah. And in terms of Christianity, a shooting star means that God is with you. He's, he's guiding you. Now, as far as the circadian rhythm line, let's look at this piece by piece. A circadian rhythm is the internal process in the human body that regulates when you sleep and when you wake up, mm -hmm. and it's all linked to the Earth's rotation. Okay. Now, a shooting star is a streak of light in the sky caused by a meteoroid burning up as it enters right. into the Earth's atmosphere. It's very fast, but a brilliant phenomenon. By combining these ideas, Kendrick could be suggesting that like a shooting star, his life or moments in his life are intense but fast. Plenty of meteoroids remain in space, and only some are destined to enter the Earth's atmosphere wow. and become shooting stars. Kendrick doesn't want to be another rock floating through space. He <laughs> wants to make a lasting impact with his art, but he recognizes that he has a limited time on Earth to make this happen. Yeah, he lives by his own yeah. rhythm, one that is unique compared to the typical predictable cycles right most up. people it's experience. Crazy. The life that he lives has intense, brilliant moments that stand out against the regular circadian rhythm. Coming off his previous line, this likely reflects his own impact on culture, where his presence is powerful and influential. Coming off the last line, Kendrick dishes out a triple entendre. Firstly, he refers to Raphael Urbino, a famous Italian artist who is ironically one of the big three artists that is responsible for curating a style of European art called Mannerism. Okay. Secondly, Kendrick is talking about Raphael the Angel, which was one of the three angels that was referenced earlier, and Raphael is known for being a protector and healer. Lastly, Kendrick pulls qualities from both Raphael's by one, providing people with genuine art, in this case music, yeah. and two, his music acts as therapy for a lot of people and helps to heal them. And of course, last but not least, and this one went over everyone's heads, Ninja Turtles. Raphael the Ninja Turtle. I'm fucking with you guys. I made that one uh, up. He's just my favorite turtle, so I, I took the opportunity to get him. He said, I'm straight cat. Where did you come up with this stuff? Raphael's always talking to slick, too. <laughs> yeah. So I look at this line very different from everyone else, and I, I'm not saying I'm right, but just hear me out. Kendrick says that but the industry is yeah. cooked, and what I think he means by this is that the industry is a facade. Record labels are cooking the books and yes. inflating the numbers. Yes. These labels are desperate and will do anything to give the illusion that their product is in high demand. Yeah. By picking the carcass apart, I feel... That's the first thing we realized when we actually started reacting mm -hmm. a year ago, that the books is cooked, the numbers is fake. Um, you just did tell from a reactor standpoint after a while yeah. if these numbers are cooked or if these are actually real numbers. Yeah, you can definitely tell. And, and, yeah. and things start just making sense. When it you start making sense. Oh, I see it. Yeah, facts. Well, Kendrick is alluding to exposing even more industry secrets as we heard exactly how he felt about it on Euphoria. Fuck the 
industry too. If and I think what I'm saying makes even more sense on the next line. Yeah, somebody's line, I can see the vibe, so act. Act. You looking compromised, let's kill the layers back. So many people have accent. What did I do? What did I do? Why you say fuck me? <laughs> you say fuck me for? <laughs> it's crazy. The vibe, so act. Even you looking compromised, let's kill the layers back. So many people have accused academics of being on Drake's payroll and being on the record label's payroll. Now, it's no secret that record labels have been... I mean, academics put it out there that um, he's for hire. You feel what I'm saying? He yeah. lets you know I've been working with labels. I do labels. I promote. They give me money. I go do my job. Um, so he been put that out there. Yeah, he didn't try to hide that uh, at all. Yeah, he wanted to let you know I was getting money. This time I'm getting money. Especially with like, the Meek Mill beef. He's like, Meek, your label been paying me. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? They've so been paying me. You don't even know, but your budget is coming to me. It's crazy. Working with influencers, podcasters, streamers, and TikTok dancers oh, baby. to help with sales. Wham. However, it's even beyond sales because some of these guys like Aiden Ross hey, and Kai Sinet hey. seriously have the power to shape how an artist is Bert. perceived. Drake is UMG's golden boy, and I feel like Kendrick is insinuating that much like how they cook the books for their artists, the industry is crooked and manipulative, and I'll throw as many resources at this thing as possible to protect Drake's name. Let's kill the layers back. It's here where Kendrick appears to be threatening to expose back. more of these secrets as he plans to peel the layers back, mm -hmm. which is something that Pusha said to Drake during their beef. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Mm. Now, I've been watching academics from the very beginning, <laughs> and he's a well-documented Drake super fan i yeah. think he just loves drake it's, it's his favorite artist i don't yeah. think he's paid off or anything i just think he's mm -hmm. a massive drake fan um i hear what he's saying but it just makes sense that labels pay academics umg is with drake it would make sense that they would give him money it don't have to come from drake directly, directly no but if it's coming from his budget <laughs> yeah it's coming from his budget <laughs> Fact. inevitably People go to bank. Kendrick makes reference to Drake's trolling antics from earlier on in the beef. Shortly after dropping the push-ups track, Drake decided to antagonize Kendrick's manager, Ant, by posting two pictures. Wow. Kendrick continues to paint Drake as the bad guy and bully in the situation <laughs> oh, by insinuating that Drake is picking easy targets. Damn. Ant is not a rapper and isn't known for causing issues with anyone, and because Kendrick is close with Ant, He's a good person to defend him. Right. And remember on Euphoria, yeah. Kendrick said that he would inherit the beef for Pharrell, who, by all accounts, I believe is a pretty good dude. About cash, dog. That's not even the leak. So coming off the last... Uh, that just made me think about the bar that Drake said when he was like, yo, you want to defend his honor? Come get the jewelry to fuck up my house. <laughs> yeah, get the jewelry. <laughs> you crazy. know where it's at. Yeah, dude. About cash, dog. That's not even the leak. So coming off the last line about messing with good people, mm -hmm. Kendrick references Drake's bullying tactics back, against yeah. the weekend's yeah. manager, Mr. Cash. Yeah. A lot of people thought that Cash could have been the mole that was feeding Kendrick information, but he confirms here that this is not the source of the leak. Mm. Well, I think the line actually works in another way also. Conspiracies about Cash Dog also perfectly ties into Drake's claims about Kendrick and Top Dog, where Drake stated on push-ups that the label was extorting Kendrick and taking 50% of the profit. Mm. Find the jewels like cash, dog. I just need you to think. Kendrick really starts to play with Drake's head as he's asking Drake <laughs> to, think to think a little bit harder about who the mole could be. I need you to he think. makes a reference to Cash Doll, who was once robbed for 500000 in jewelry. It's crazy. It would make a lot more sense if we could find out that it was someone close to Cash Doll that mm -hmm. took this jewelry. But in order to do that, someone would need to watch all of our interviews. Right. It was around the time I lost a whole I got you. <laughs> jury mm -hmm. in um la somebody stole it from me oh i remember that you went right yeah okay yeah, and We're it hurt it that. hurted my it hurt it, it hurted because you didn't lose it, somebody took it. Yeah, somebody somebody took stole it. it, so that's somebody you trusted. Yeah. And, but it's not just about the items, too, right? It's, <laughs> it's also about the people that you have around you, because yeah. that's also a yeah. warning call. So Kendrick has clearly been paying attention. It's like, yo, um, you have people around that starving. <laughs> Yeah. If they don't feel like they're being taken care of the way they should be taken care of, they're going to take care of themselves. Um, That's why they were saying you got to be careful with people you have around you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, because they'll get you lined up. Yeah, you either feed the wolves or the wolves are going to find a way to eat on their own. That's it. And the fact that it was someone inner circle 
that had a hand in it's taking his just jewelry, <laughs> this line just gained They're even more close, depth. Close enough to get close to you. Get the jewelry. I just need you to be. <clears throat> Tough line, man. You, you gotta say, it is. Yeah, it was. Now, I don't want to feed too much into this Ebony Prince character from Twitter, oh, yeah. but it is definitely interesting given the fact that he posted a bunch of jewelry and proof of receipts of alleged jewelry that Drake purchased. So, I mean, this could very well be in reference to all that. No one can confirm. It's all really weird. Are you finally ready to play Happy Weather? Let's see. Let's Kendrick see. continues to turn up the heat and references his lyrics from Euphoria. Happy Weather, play. Happy Weather. Okay, nigga, let's play. Now he really starts let's to mess play. with Drake's head. Have you ever thought that OVO is working, working for, for me? me? Kendrick cleverly attempts to make Drake question all those around <laughs> yeah. him by suggesting that someone jobs. close to him is not really on his side. So pretty self-explanatory, Kendrick team. continues to paint yeah, Drake as the bad guy nobody. and implies that even his own team are preying on his downfall, mm. claiming that he deserves everything that's coming. Kendrick references Drake's number mm. one smash, slide up out Pussy of Slide. This this was a track that had everyone dancing hey, during hey. the summer of 2020, TikTok, yeah. which is something that Drake is really good at doing. Mm. Now, Tussie Slide conveniently dropped just three months after a video surfaced of Drake, where he's kissing a 17-year-old girl hey, on light stage. Up for this thing video. This is the most documented video. <laughs> yeah, everybody, yeah, this one. The clip took the internet by storm as Drake already had a past that raised a lot of eyebrows. And it was just five months before that where Drake paid 350k to a SA case, which was something that Kendrick referenced on Euphoria. Have you ever paid 500, like to an open case? These were big stories at the time. Like a lot of people talked about this shit. It was not a good look for Drake, so he drops his mm. When he said that, I did not get that bar on that it level. It landed now. It definitely landed. Oh, man. As of hit. And of course, that helps deaden the noise, right? However, when it comes to this beef, Kendrick seems to be saying that even if Drake pumps out another big hit, the damage that he's about to inflict in this war will never be forgotten. No matter what Drake says or does, he's not. That's like almost kind of what we're seeing happen right now. Like the last three singles or features he's been on since this, yeah. they all been duds. Duds. So it's almost like he was saying. Totally lackluster. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna get away from what Kendrick's about to do. I mean, this is probably true. Not Like Us is a was a number one record. Look what he was saying on there. Like, yeah. Drake couldn't even get away from the Ghost Rider shit. Like, this yeah. new stuff's pretty heavy. Like, it's gonna be hard to shake. It was fun until you start to put money in the streets. They lost money because they came back with no, no receipts. receipts. Kendrick insinuates that Drake is paying people to find dirt on him. Now, Kendrick, who lives a very low-key and private life, claims that Drake wasted his money <laughs> since there's no dirt to be found. <laughs> and it's also clever because, you know, you can't get your money back from a store without the receipt. I'm sorry that I live a warm life. I love peace, but war ready if the world is ready to see him bleed. Kendrick Ooh. claims that the world is ready to see him take Drake's head <laughs> Dang, off. And when we think about this ready. beef, it seems he definitely let it be known. Drake bleeds. <laughs> you know what yes, I'm he does. He's human. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he wasn't looking like that. He was, was like a dem he was like a demigod almost. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but like, I was just like, oh, we can't even touch him. He was like, nah, he bleeds. He's he a bleeds. man. Facts. World is ready to see him take Drake's head off, and when we think about this beef, it seems like this was really oh, the God. case. Kanye even said that all the rappers were excited to eliminate Drake, mm. and everyone from the casual hip hop fan to people that didn't even listen to the genre were chiming in to tear Drake down. I mean, it, it was at the point where people were hating on Drake and they didn't even know why. Like, they'd yeah. be like, I'm a fucking metalhead, but Shit. fuck Drake. <laughs> so the word Elohim can actually be found in the scripture of multiple religions. In Christianity, it can be found in the Old Testament, and in Judaism, it's used in the Hebrew Bible. However, in both religions, it's recognized as a word for God. Yeah. Kendrick could be using this here as a word of common ground between the two religions to state that regardless of the faith, he is the God. And in the exact same context, he uses this word on family ties, which is a record that I always thought 
was full of shots at Drake. The Elohim, the rebirth. Before you get to the Father, you gotta holler at me first, bitch. Ooh. Now, the KGW thing is cryptic as it Before you gets. get to the Father, I, I cannot nah, figure it out. First. I look for days and days. None of the theories that I saw make sense to me. I think it's something that only Drake is gonna understand. But if one of you guys know, or you think you know, let me know in the, in the comments. Comment. It drove me crazy. Yeah. No, you can't sleep. These images trouble you. No, the wires in your circle should puzzle you. Mm -hmm. Kendrick continues with the mental gymnastics. <laughs> he paints Drake as someone that is tossing and turning to figure out who the mole could be in his camp. He does this by referencing a wire in his circle, <laughs> yeah. which is something that rats will wear when gathering information oh, from feds. <laughs> and this is going over all of our heads because clearly the line is layered. There's something there. It's very eerie. It's very cryptic. There's something we're missing. If you were street smart, then you would a cart that your entourage is only to hustle you. Kendrick comes in with a bit of a cultural reference here. <laughs> Drake isn't from the streets, but over the years has surrounded himself with street people. Right. It's not uncommon in hip hop for a rapper to have an entourage of people who are only around for their own benefit. So Kendrick's saying like Drake is so ignorant that he believes that these guys really like him when they're just using him. And Kendrick's a little wiser to it. Like, he's mm -hmm. seen this play before. A hundred niggas that you got on salary, and 20 of them want you as a casualty. Mm. Kendrick mm. makes reference to the people That's on crazy. Drake's payroll. Now, this could be a reference to anything from the people that signed to his label, the team of writers that he's employed, streamers like Aiden Ross or Kai, his Mob Ties connection with Jay Prince, mm. or any of the either. other street connections that he may have established over the years. And he's saying 20% of these... He's definitely not talking about mob ties. Mob mm. ties are good off of Drake. Uh, we we want to keep you upright and keep the money coming in. Yeah. Something happened to you, that happened to, uh, something happened to the free bags we got coming in towards us. Uh, we want them to keep dropping on monthly. Yeah, we're going to make sure you are... Right. Yeah, as much as possible. These guys want you out of here. They want you gone. And one of them is actually next to you, and two of them is practically tired of your lifestyle. Just don't got the audacity to tell you. Mm. Now, I'll be honest, it's guys. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know who Kendrick's talking about here. Is it 21 Savage? Is it 40? Is it Yachty? Is it Chubbs? Who really knows? Definitely it does not seem very specific. <laughs> and Kendrick says this with such conviction. But at the same time, this could also just be a war tactic to get inside Drake's head even further to make him question absolutely anyone that's close to him. It's a crazy yeah. angle, but Smart. no one knows for sure who he's talking about. Let me tell you some game, cause I can see you, my little homie. You playing dirty with propaganda, he blow up on you. Coming off the last line where Kendrick claimed that people close to Drake don't have the heart to tell him the truth, Kendrick claims that he's about to give some advice to Drake as he can see through his dirty propaganda see, and suggest that it's going to blow up in his face. It's crazy. This could be in reference to the narratives that Drake has been planting about his failed relationship with Whitney, the 50-50 split Whitney. rumors with TDE, using streamers like Aiden and Kai to help with public perception, or cooking the numbers. Right. You're playing nerdy with Zach Bia and Twitter bots. Mm. So remember what I mentioned earlier about Kendrick's thoughts on the music industry when it comes to cooking the numbers. Could Popular influencer Zach Bia hosted an online DJ segment on his Instagram during COVID-19. The show garnered a huge amount of traffic, and okay. he even premiered Drake's hit, Tussie Slide. It's about to be the hottest song in the world. Hmm. Song, song of the summer. No hey, What Kendrick is trying to get across here is that Drake uses every resource imaginable to manipulate the masses. Puppet he man. drives this home even sure. more Everyone's with the reference to Drake think. using Twitter bots yeah. during the beef, which is something else that he was accused of doing. But your reality can't hide behind Wi-Fi. No. Kendrick claims that what he's about to reveal about Drake will be so extreme that all his old tactics won't work anymore. This ties it perfectly into what he said earlier about not being able to tussy slide his way out of the situation uh, by uh. using someone like Zach Bia for internet games. Your little memes is losing steam, they figured you out. Yeah. Kendrick claims that Drake's Instagram memes and the trolling that he was doing <laughs> is losing steam, yeah. which is 100% correct. Yeah. In hindsight, all the childish bullshit that Drake was doing online only made him look even more ridiculous when this beef came to a close. Yeah. It really annoys me because when Drake went against Meek, he was quiet. He let the music talk. And now in this beef, he acted like Meek. He had the Twitter fingers. He was doing yeah. all these memes. And yeah. 
It just made him look ridiculous. Yeah. So again, back to the streamers, influencers, podcasters, and media personalities. Many said that UMG and Drake were paying these people off, forcing opinions. Damn. It's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, even people were saying that I was paid off by Drake. Tons Damn. of people. Wow. It's like if anyone says anything good about them, they're on some sort of payroll. They're, they're just going to say that in the comment section. I remember we did something with Nikki, and they were saying we was on Nikki payroll. So it, it's, if you're doing anything, you're saying something good about a person, someone's going to say you want that person's payroll. Well, he does have an owl back there under his trophy, though. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's not an owl. That's like a space bear, a teddy bear. A space bear. Like the Kanye West bear, almost. It might be an owl. <laughs> He's like, do it. Space bear. I was like, maybe I know what you're talking about. Doing something right. right. Maybe some people agree with them. You know what I mean? It's time that you look around on who's around you before you figure that you're not alone. Ask what Mike would do. What would so Mike in the do? first line, Kendrick is advising Drake to take a good look at his team, assess the situation, and start questioning who's really loyal here. Hmm. Right. He then suggests that Drake is not alone with his OVO team, meaning that someone from outside is always present. Mm. I mean, this whole planting nice. seeds of doubt in Drake's brain about it's his crazy. crew is like a huge angle Limiting in the latter part free. of this record. Rent to end free. things off, <laughs> Kendrick day. tells Drake to think about what Mike would do, which is mm. definitely a reference to Michael Jackson, he as he him? also quotes his song, You're Not Alone. Mm. What's even more interesting is the fact that R. Kelly, R. Wrote, Kelly wrote this record for MJ, mm. and we all know about R. Kelly and what he was mm. into. Another yeah. MJ flip, and again, this one is fire. <laughs> Finally, is we fire. also got to consider that MJ's personal doctor, someone who he was obviously close with, was proven guilty in court of killing MJ with a cocktail of medications. Mm. So again, Drake needs to be careful of who's around him because they might just be responsible for his downfall. That's crazy. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this record was extremely difficult to break down. It is very cryptic. The way that it's written is mind boggling. Yeah. I know I missed a lot of shit <laughs> because I know there's a lot of stuff in here that Drake is only gonna get right. and no one else will. Yeah. But in saying that, it was made for him. got Family yeah. Matters coming up next. And it's that's an amazing TV. record. And I Let's feel like. I'll tell you what. I knew that shots were being fired. Mm -hmm. But there's so many angles, so many underlining, deep rooted what ways you can look at this. Yeah. It's just mind boggling. Yeah, definitely. It's crazy. But I like how he uh, really put this information together. He dug into some things. Mm -hmm. Some of these is just like, man, if, if this holds to be true. It's crazy. It's a masterminded work. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. What you think? I think like you think, if this stuff holds to be true, it takes the song to a whole different level. It was already on the top tier level, but if this all holds up, it's on a whole nother level. The thought that was being put in it, the subliminal shots that only mm -hmm. Drake could understand, on the stuff that we could actually break down on our side, and it still was a dope song. Um, how he put the Al Green um, sample on the back-to-back, -back. 616 is yeah. when he met him. He took his time stamps, like, the way that everything was broken down. I think this guy did a uh, hell of a job just breaking everything down. When they said tons of new information, it was definitely uh, tons of new information. Uh, can't wait to do more stuff just like this. But until then, it's your boy Trey TV, and I'm out.